Hello, my name is Mike Schubert and welcome to a demo of WoundSim. Uh, WoundSim is a product that is used to build finite element models of composite overwrap pressure vessels. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, the basic core functionality of WoundSim, which is building the geometry of a, of a COPV and then performing an analysis by breaking that geometry up into a finite element model and applying loads and pressures and running an analysis and post-processing the results. So that's what we're going to do today. So we have in WoundSim, we have three tabs here. We have the first one, which is COPV model, and that is basically the tab, all the functionality under that tab is used to create the representation of the COPV. And we're going to do it through an axisymmetric cross-section of the COPV. So once that operation is performed, then the next tab is the, the things that are required to build a finite element model inside of Abacus. And finally, the third tab, which we're not going to go over today, and which is uh, in a separate uh, demo video, is a, uh, the capability of doing correlation. For example, let's say you have a CAD program that can write out um, a computer, a CSV files for the points of every layer. So we can use that to compare what WoundSim generates and then you can do some optimization to match that data very well. So that's the correlation part. And then the optimization is we can uh, have Wounds him run through many, many, many different abacus analysis to to minimize, let's say, the weight or minimize the stresses um, based on some pressure. All right. So we're just going to talk about the first two tabs today. All right. So the first thing we'll have to do is first of all we have our a default model name. We choose our work directory, which I've set something up here for a demo. And then we have to define a liner and material properties. Now a liner, we're going to import from a CSV file. So if we have some tool that can generate our CSV file, that's fine. Otherwise, we have a translator for Abacus that we can do that very easily with. And we'll do that in just a moment. And the same can be said with material properties. We can actually enter all the material properties for the materials that we'll be using. But if we've already got that data inside of an Abacus file, we can just import it. So what we'll do before we start this is we'll go and re go and open uh, Abacus. And here we have a model that's been set up. I'm going to rename this to Model 1 just so it doesn't cause any confusion. So we have Model 1 here and Model 1 in Abacus here. So what we've got is an axisymmetric model of just a liner. Now this liner happens to be uh, comprised of two different part instances, and we can see the different colors. But primarily what we're going to first have to do is define the, the, the liner, the, the outside of the liner where the composite overwrap pressure can wrap onto. So we're going to open up the WoundSim translator. Okay, and we have a, a number of items up top here. So first of all, we have a user's manual. This is a tool to install workshops. So if you're first ramping up uh, learning how to use WoundSim, that'll help you. And then we have regression tests and benchmarks and in, in models that are uh, examples of how to import from the Wound Composite Modeler, which is a tool that I developed when I used to work at Dassault Systems. Okay, and then we have these tools that we're going to use right now. But let me first run through some of these other ones. We have a Lamina Property Generator, which is uh, a tool that you can use your um, fiber properties and matrix properties and run this tool and get an equivalent Lamina property. And that's what we will need for WoundSim. And we have a tool if, you know, typically if you're going to get geometry uh, for a liner, that's typically going to be in 3D. So you want to, if you want to be able to do an axisymmetric model, you need to create a cross section of it. So this option just allows you to do that very easily. And then 
uh, an option just summarizing your licensing. And then these last three are for post-processing. This is a tool to make it easy to create paths. This is a tool for generating path plots of different, let's say, lamina stresses or wind angle, those kinds of things. And then this is the options for contour plotting. These are allows you to pick specific output quantities that are related to the composite. All right, so we're going to start off using this liner tool. All right, so I'm going to call this an out. We're going to create an output CSV file. Now this just summarizes what we're looking at. So this model, what well, we've chosen model one here, which is the only model in, in this CAE file, um, but it's axisymmetric and it's got half a tank. All right, so what we're going to do is we want to choose the set that defines the outer perimeter of this liner. So I'm going to highlight it, and it happens to be that the very first set does that. Now, instead of just saying OK and having that define my set, the thing is this set has, in this case, maybe 500 to 1,000 nodes. Now, when we define the liner for WoundSim, we don't want to include every single node because the way WoundSim draws up the layers is that every single node um, that we put in that liner definition it is used to determine the exterior of, a, of you know, the first layer. And then that point is used to determine the exterior of the next layer and so on and so on. So if you have thousands of points, you're really going to slow the algorithm down. You know, you'll slow the display down. So typically what we try to do is we try to zoom in on a target for the number of points on the dome and the liner, which is roughly 50. You know, you can do a little bit more. It's not going to hurt you. But um, so this is kind of our goal here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, hit this button. And this just generates the list of the points starting from the top, which is here. And it shows the list of the points. And eventually you get to some transition where you transition from the dome to the cylinder. OK, so right now every single point is selected. So we have a, a very fine number of points. So we want to try to coarsen that up. So if we look down here, we see the number of points on the top dome is 213. The number of points in the cylinder is 245. Now, do we really need 245 points to draw basically a straight line? So we really don't need 245. We can do well below 50. Um, now, the dome is curved, so we probably need at least 50 points. So what we'll do is we'll use these tools to start deactivating points. So I click this. This is to deactivate points. So now the number of points is down to 64, and you can see how a lot of nodes are skipped. So we'll make that fairly coarse. We'll do the same thing with the top of the liner. So now we're down to 56. So now we've gone to about 90 points compared to, you know, five or 600. All right. So I'm going to hit OK. And now we've got a CSV file that Wildsim can use. All right. The next item is writing, a, uh, exporting the material properties out. So I'll call that test. And what this dialog does is it just scans through the model, looks at the materials, just displays them, and then it just puts a check mark at, if it has these options called fail stress and fail strain. And those uh, are supported by WoundSim, so we can um, calculate those for every single layer. But anyway, so this, uh, these materials don't have that. So we're just going to export them as is. OK, so those two files have been created. So now we can go back to WoundSim and import these very easily. So let's just import our liner. And you notice at 0, this is a half tank. So the bottom is exactly at a y coordinate of 0. OK, and then we'll import our materials. Again, with the materials, we could have entered this all manually, but if we've got those in Abacus, we might as well take advantage of it. OK, so now we're ready to start uh, building a model. All right, so we have a few numbers up here if you want to just enter these once, and then every time you add a layer, they'll be uh, added automatically. But we'll just go ahead and do things manually here. All right, so the first layer, we're going to do a helical with no friction. Give a wind angle 12 degrees. Now this is in millimeters, so I'm going to put 
put a thickness of one millimeter, bandwidth of 10. All right, and we will plot the layup here. So you see, we start with the uniform thickness down here. And as we come up the dome, maybe it's not quite so noticeable until you get up higher, but this thickness starts to build up. All right. And finally, we have this, what we call a transition point, this point here. And the position of this is, is based on these two numbers here, the in cap fraction, and the bandwidth. So the bandwidth is 10. The multiple of this fraction, in cap fraction times 10, and that'll give us how far back we go from this point to this point. This is the turnaround radius, and then this is the transition radius or transition point. So, so these those two numbers determine where we're at here. Right. Okay. So there's our first layer. It's a helical. So now we're going to add a hoop, typically at 90 degrees or 89 or something like that. Okay. And for a hoop, we have to give where this thing terminates in the y coordinate. So, so again, we the zero coordinate is the center of the tank. Again, this is a symmetric tank. So we can, let's say, put our first y coordinate somewhere around 260. Okay. All right. So let's add another layer now. And again, we'll do one with no friction. And this time, we'll do 15 degrees. So this will terminate a little bit before the previous one. OK. So you see it terminates here. All right, so then we'll add another hoop. And what we'll do here is we'll start to step these back. We don't really want them terminating at the same Y position because then you they start to really stack up and you get this huge dip. So we're going to back those off a little bit, just like that. So we intersperse the helicals with the hoops. OK. So now let's do a helical with friction. OK, so what I'm going to do is a 10 degree wind angle. Same. I'm going to use the same thickness and bandwidth throughout. All right. But now we have to give a Y coordinate. So let's zoom up here. Now a helical with friction, we're required to give a Y coordinate. So they're very useful when we start to control the thickness buildup in the polar boss. All right. So what I want to do is I want to terminate around here somewhere. And, and basically you'd look up, you would look at your, the cross section of the tank that you wound if you want to analyze it. And you're, you're going to measure and determine exactly how this thickness builds up. So we can match that very easily. All right. So we're going to say, let's see, around 358, we'll say somewhere around there. Now, what I want to do is if you look at where this thing went from a continuous buildup and then transitioned over to our, what we call an end cap, that point here, what I want to do is I want to have that point start further out. So I'm going to extend that. So when we're building up, it'll, it'll come around this, start to curve. And then when we're about 1.5 times the bandwidth, which is a distance of 15 mils, then 15 millimeters, then it will just continue straight until we hit that intersection of 358. All right. So that's exactly what we see there. So we follow that round up to about here, or maybe here. I can't tell. All right. And then we just draw a straight line over to the intersection. OK, so now let's go and let's say add another hoop. Now what I'm going to do is, let's see, we're here. I don't want to get too far down the cylinder, so I'm going to wrap the next one up around here somewhere. We'll go all the way up to like 275, or let's say 265. Okay. 
There we go. And then we'll do one last helical. Do helical with friction again. Again, we're wrapping all the way to the polar boss. Oops, let's do 10 degrees, not 90. Right. So let's go zooming in here. Again, so once we figured out where our hoop's going to terminate, let's call it, or a heel is going to terminate, let's call it 6363. Okay. And so we now have seven layers. So for, you know, again, I've made these layers pretty thick just so it's easy to visualize. All right, so let's say that, okay, we've got our geometry that we want. Okay, so the next step is we go to the finite element tab. Okay, and what we'll see here is there's there's two sets of options of how we're going to control the finite element model. And it's basically a push versus a pull mode. So in this mode, we're going to push the data out to Abacus and then have Abacus run the analysis. Or what I recommend the first time that you're building, it's probably easier to pull the data over make some changes in in abacus do a few things there until you've got your analysis you know satisfactorily running and then once that's done then you pull that data back and then from there on in you just control it through wound sim all right so the first time let's see what we're going to do we've got us here's our settings down here we've got the geometry we can do axisymmetric 3d axis shell or 3d shell um, vertical translation We'll see what that means in a minute. Once we get into Abacus, I'll describe what that is. All right, so we have our mesh controls. So we're going to do linear elements fully integrated. Number of elements through a helical layer, two. We'll make the same two um, for the hoops. Number of elements along the length of the tank is 400. Some layer by layer controls. If we want to just, let's say we want to change the number of elements through the thickness for a given layer, we can do that. So Right now, this is going to be applied to all the layers, but if we want to override certain ones, we can. And then the number of dome and cylinder partitions, we'll see what this means in a minute. I'm going to set those to 10. And then interactions. This is uh, what is the interaction between the liner and the composite? Are we going to model it with a tie constraint or, a, or contact? And then loading, are we going to put pressure loads on? Again, a lot of this stuff you could do inside of Abacus, outside of WoundSim, but if we do it here, we've got it all stored. So for now, we'll, we'll leave this stuff blank, and then we'll read it back in. Okay. All right, so let's do this. So we've got model one. I'm going to save it. So it says model XML file has been successfully saved. So we've got model one.xml. Okay, so what we're going to do here, so let's go back to our model. So what we had done is we had used the liner dialog and the materials to export that out. Now we've built up our layup. We've stored the XML file. So now I want to go ahead and start building the model inside of Abacus. So we can give it any name we want. So there's only one model in this CAE file. Okay, so here's the three steps that we need to do. So let's go to layup. Now in this, there's basically two boxes. One is editable, one is not. So the one that is not ed editable is basically the geometry of, of the COPV. That's defined entirely in WoundSim. So all we're going to do is import that data. All right, so I'm going to import that. And now we've read it all in, and this is just in there for information. We can't change any of it. Uh, we can't change any of the geometry. The translator, all it does is it builds the finite element model from the geometry. Okay. So the ones that we can do, if we want to do an axisymmetric model or a 3D, now this assembly happens to have an axisymmetric model. So even if we tried to do a 3D, it wouldn't let us. All right, but we could do different types of analysis, a static, a heat transfer, a coupled heat. Our geometry could be continuum or shell. All right. And then we have this vertical translation. Now, the vertical translation is that we're going to create the composite 
and then do we need to translate it up or down? Now, when we when we perform this operation with the liner dialog, it gave us some print out at the bottom, and it basically said the the center of the the position at the center of the tank is actually at a negative five. So I'm going to put negative 5.0 here. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and submit it. Okay, and you see we're green check mark. That means we've built the model. All right, one thing I want to do just to make this look a little bit better is. Okay, so this will just clean up the display. All right. So here's our, here's our layers. Now we haven't meshed anything yet. We've just built the geometry. So you'll notice over here, you see these lines. And what those are is these are those end caps. So this is what we call that transition point. So we have a continuous thickness. Now these happen to be the, the hoops. So we have a transition, a, a uniform thickness. And then it just trans, kind of transitions down into an end cap. All right. So we actually partition these so that we can put one type of mesh here and another type of mesh here. So this is fully quad, um, fully quad elements, and this is quad dominated. So we might see some triangle elements in there. All right. So we do this to transition the mesh more nicely. Okay. Now the other thing we have to do with the mesh is we really need to put partitions in here because otherwise the mesh in CAE will start to skew some of these elements. We won't get this nice square rectangular shape elements like you see here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit the mesh dialog. So now we have element order, linear versus quadratic. That's We already set these. We set this one. Now as far as the number of elements along the tank, we just want to make sure that this aspect ratio is less than four. Otherwise the elements get too long, elongated and then they get very distorted around the areas where one layer overlaps another. So we've got a target of 2.1, so that looks pretty good. So we'll stick with 400, All right? And this is the same layer by layer controls. So here's our number of partitions. All right, so let me go ahead and just sketch these up so you can see what I mean by partitions. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw some lines through the layup. So here's the cylinder, we got 10 of them. Now in the dome, it may not draw, draw 10. What it's gonna try to do is draw 10, but if it finds that if it calculates one coming through here, it'll try to shift it around within some tolerance. And if it can't, if it comes too close to one of these vertices that's drawn here in purple, then it just won't draw it. All right. So if you want to, you could kind of manually draw some and override the automa automated layup that uh, Wounsim is trying to calculate. So we can use these two items here to override it. So we'll do the first one. It says a one-click partition. It's just as the name says. Click it one time and we get the partition. Okay, so there's our partitions. Now let's say we want to go up here. Now, now the thing about a, the one click is that the reason we can do it with one click is that what it does is if we click somewhere over here, it'll find the closest projection onto this line, the, the basically the liner, and then it'll draw a line normal to the liner all the way through the thickness. Now what if we have a more complicated layout? Maybe you have 50 to 100 layers and you can't quite get a, a partition in there that's normal to the liner. Maybe you have to have it a little bit skewed. So we could use this tool that says add a two-click partition. So maybe I want to put one here and one over here. Okay, so that gives me my two-click partition. All right, so then if I want to remove them, I can remove them with this, or I can or delete them and then redraw them based on just these settings. But we'll just say, okay, that looks good. We'll hit OK. Okay, so let me turn the color coding back on. So now, all right, let's turn off the mesh so we can see how these partitions got written on there. Okay, and we have quite a few of them over in here. That's where we did all those manual partitions. All right, so let's look at the mesh that resulted. So we get a pretty nice mesh with pretty rectangular elements, not too skewed. So here again, we have some triangular elements in here, and here, and here, 
All right, so we end up with a pretty good mesh. All right. And you notice we have quite a few up here. You know, some triangles up here. Okay. So finally, our last step is to set up the analysis. Okay. Now in this, let's see here. Right now, we have one boundary condition in there, which is just on the liner. That's the symmetry plane of the liner. So we could go in and generate this symmetry plane. But let's go and open this analysis tool first. Let's go, so let's go through this. So first of all, we see save to XML. What this is going to do is we're going to hit OK. It'll build everything, and then it'll overwrite that model.xml file that was written by WoundSim. So we're going to update it. So we've made some changes. You know, maybe we changed the meshing controls or whatever. We're going to make some changes here, and all that stuff will be saved, and then we can pull it back to WoundSim. All right, so we have a wind angle increment. So what that means is the wind angles you know, down the cylinder are constant, but as the helicals come up the dome, the wind angle really starts to change. So at every wind angle, you know, at every basically at every element, the wind angle is different, so we have to generate properties that are based on that wind angle. Um, the reason we have to do that is that the uh, in Abacus, we the material properties have to be in the one-two plane. Um, however, our fibers are out of plane. So what we do have to do is take those lamina properties that are out of plane and transform them to the in-plane directions. So when we do that, what we're going to do is group all those materials together based on an increment of angle. Otherwise, every single element would have its own material. So we, uh, we just put them in bins, is what we call it, based on a wind angle increment of 1. So how many CPUs are we going to use? We'll say 30. Now, do we want to generate the symmetry boundary condition on the composite? Yes. Do we want to include steps? Yes. We're going to put in 25 degrees, put in a pressure of 10. Oh, sorry. For, this is the liner surface pressure. So we're selecting. Let's kind of zoom out here. We're selecting the surface. So this first one is the surface. OK, number of steps. We'll call it uh, MEOP. 10 megapascals. Okay, and if we wanted to go from one step to another by changing temperature, you know, so we could calculate the thermal expansion and those kind of behaviors, but we'll just go with a single step with the pressure. Okay, so the next item is that we have to do we have do we want to include or have wound sim generate the interaction between the liner and the composite? So in this case, we have to select the liner outer surface. So that's the surface we're looking at. And the inner surface of the composite is uh, calculated automatically by WoundSim. OK. And then we'll just stick with the tide constraint. OK, so we hit OK. OK, so now let's reset this to materials. So we can look at our color coding. And you see the hoops are in this magenta color, or some kind of purple. And those are all at 90. And then you see as the as the helicals come up to the polar boss, you have a big section that's at 90 degrees also. All right, so they go from 10 degrees or 12 degrees. As they get closer and closer, they really start to change rapidly. And that's why you see all these different colors. Down here, you know, this first layer here, so it, I think it was 10 degrees or 12 degrees or something. So it went from 12 to 13 here, 13 to 14, and so on. OK. All right, so we basically got our analysis ready to run. So let's go to the job module. OK, here's model 1. Now I just want to edit this real quick. So here's our number of CPUs that we set. Now, typically, if we're doing output processing in the past, we would use a user subroutine called UVARM. Now, we still do that, but now we have a library built in so that we don't have to recompile it every time. So you as a user don't need a Fortran compiler. So we build a library, and what WoundSim does is when we 
submitted that last step, it created an env file in your home directory, which points to the library that will calculate all of our output, you know, the fiber strain, fiber stress, and so on. All right. So we no longer need a user subroutine. We don't need a Fortran compiler. All right, so let's go ahead and submit this. All right, so this should only take 15 or 30 seconds, maybe half a minute, maybe at the most. All right, so the job's complete. Now let's take a look at the results. All right, so the first thing I want to do is always look at the wind angle just as a sanity check here. So I'm going to hit this contour icon. And what this displays is all the different UVARM variables that are available. All right, so if you look at this, these are the, this is the output quantities. We see all the different UVARMs. So what this tool does is it just describes what they are. I mean, the UVARM1 doesn't tell us anything, but using this tool, we at least can see the definition of all of these things. So UVARM1, I hit apply, and we get a contour of UVARM1, and we see this wind angle like we suspect we should. All right. Then if we want, we can do a fiber strain. All right, so we get a contour of the fiber strain. So let's do this. Let's do path plotting. UVARM2, I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so here's a path plot along the length of the cylinder and then up along the dome of the fiber strain. All right, so what we see is we see these layer one here is this red layer. It's hard to tell, but you see these are our hoop layers. And we have a uniform fiber strain until we come right around the end of them. All right, and distance along the path, you can see this is... This terminates right, this transition between the cylinder and the, re, and the dome. Remember, they were around 250 to 260. So this is our, our cylinder, and then these are our hoops. So you see lots of noise as one layer uh, overlaps another. You get these big oscillations and stresses. All right. So if we want, we can clean this up a little bit. So let's go back and just put a smoothing factor on here and do the same thing. Okay, so we just kind of clean it up a little bit. But this is exactly what we want to see in design. We want to see, well, maybe not such a big difference, but we do want to see the, um, the cylinder stresses and strains higher than the, the helicals, okay? Because if we want this, if the thing is going to fail, we want it to fail in the cylinders. If it fails in the dome, then the polar boss becomes a projectile. All right. Okay, so we've gone through, built our model. We're happy with our mesh. We're happy with our partitions. We're happy with our loads and pressures and interactions. So now, remember when we submitted this, we saved it to the XML file. So now let's go back to WoundSim. All right, so let's say... We're going to maybe modify our design a bit. Okay, so let's reopen that, that model1.xml. And what we've done is we've just re-imported all of these things, the loading sequence, the interactions, all of our mesh controls. So now we have all that stuff in there just like we want it. We know everything, all those parameters work nicely. So now we can go to the to the push mode. So we can control the analysis from this point. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's say we just want to add another helical. Or let's say first we'll um, add another hoop. We want to change our design. Maybe the stresses were too high, so we have to add a couple extra layers. So let's see, this is a hoop, so I'm going to... The last one is at 260, so let's bring this one down to 245. Okay. And then we'll add a, a helical with friction. Let's say 10 degrees again. Okay. 
so our last one was at 363. Let's call 368 real quick, and we'll just see if what that looks like. Okay. So again, you're going to match these to whatever you've manufactured. So I'm just um, putting in arbitrary numbers at this point. Okay. So let's say, all right, we've gone and we've uh, improved our design, added a few things, modified a few things. Okay. So what we could do here, let's, before we do that, so I'm just going to save this and it says it already exists. So we could go back here and you'll see that that's an orange cross, meaning we've read the XML once, but now it's out of date. So we could read it, go back through those steps. Or let's just save this. All right, I'm just going to control everything from here from now on. All right, so what's our source model? That was called demo CAE. Okay, our output file is going to be model1.ca. Okay, because it's, it's going to be based on the model name. It's model1. Okay, and I'm running Abacus 2017. I mean, we support 17, 18, 19, and 20, and very shortly 21 but I'm going to stick with 2017. All right, so I'll go ahead and run the job. CPU is 30. All right, and show interface just means we'll pop it up. So when it's all done, if we want to jump in there and look at it, we can. All right, so I'm going to say get build model. It already exists. Overwrite, yes, that's fine. All right, so it's generating the XML file based on the layup, and then it pops up CAE. And it's going to start building everything automatically. All right, so it's done building everything. Now it's finished the pre-processing. Now it's actually running the analysis. And it might take a little bit longer just because we added a couple of layers. Shouldn't take much longer though. Should be less than 30 seconds. Okay, and now it's done. Okay, so let's, let's wait till it's completed here. It's just about done. Saving the model. All right. Let's open. Oops, I forgot. I got to switch back to. Okay, so what I want to do is, let's go back. Okay, let's go back and display the UVARM2. That's our fiber strains. And remember, we'll set the and we'll generate another pop for new design. So looks very similar because we've added one hoop and one helical, so there's not much difference. But again, our higher values are up in the cylinder region, which we'll, is what we want. All right. Okay, so that's that's a quick look at wound sim from the translator point of view and from that wound sim GUI point of view. So we started off building our model, doing our, all of our geometry work under this tab, then using this tab to define our quantities based on finite element model. And then we we pulled that data from the translator or, f or from wound sim to the translator. Then we built the model the first time, got everything checked out, made sure it all looks right. And then we pulled that data back over. And then from here on in, we're just going to push the data. So we may make modifications and just simply hit run and keep rebuilding from this GUI. All right. So anyways, that's a quick pass at the core functionality of WoundSim. Uh, thank you very much for attending. And if you have any questions, 
you can contact us uh, at our websites. Uh, we have two companies that develop and maintain this. One is customapps.com, that's Q-U-S-T-O-M apps.com. The other is svertical.com. So yes, you know, feel free to contact either of us regarding the plugin. All right, thanks again, enjoy.